Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to 3D Now. My name is Jack and these are the best upgrades for your 3D printer. So hopping right into the video, more and more people are buying 3D printers. And as we print, things wear out and break over time, or they can just be upgraded in the first place to work better. A lot of the low cost 3D printers on the market today are built to work out of the box, but rarely do they have the parts and features to last and keep up with our evolving creativity. That is why in this video, I've devised three lists of upgrades to make your printer better, last longer, and be more reliable. First off, every 3D printer is different and I have no idea which one you have, but I'll try my best to show objectively good parts and upgrades that will make most printers better. For the purpose of this video, I'll be using my Creality CR10 as an example. Like I said before, I made three lists or tiers of upgrades. The first tier is simple upgrades to do when you take the printer right out of the box. The second tier is for upgrades after you've been printing for a little while and want better print quality or reliability. And the third tier is an all out top of the line upgrades pack that will probably cost more than your printer itself. Also for your reference, all the upgrades and parts I mentioned in this video will be linked in the video description below. Just a quick disclaimer that I personally do not have every part or upgrade I mentioned in this video but my choices reflect my experience, the community's opinions, and the help from people in my Discord. The link is also below if you want to join. So starting with tier one, there are usually parts from the 3D printer that wear out over time and can easily be upgraded. In addition, there are many upgrades you want to do right when you take the printer out of the box. The first upgrade is a hardened steel nozzle from E3D. This upgrade is not necessary to print, but the brass nozzles that come with most printers will wear out over time and not produce the best print quality. The hardened steel nozzle is much more tough and will last a lot longer than normal nozzles with the addition of protecting against abrasive materials. So if you are interested in printing exotics like carbon fiber or wood or especially metal filaments, you'll definitely want this upgrade. So I chose the nozzle from E3D because they are a trusted and reliable 3D printing company and even though the price is a little bit high at $20 for one nozzle, it is totally worth it. Next up is Capricorn PTFE tubing. So a lot of printers come with the standard white Bowden tubing that the filament slides through to get to the hot end. And usually the tolerances on those cheap tubes are not the best and cause a lot of friction along the path to the hot end. And that results in under extrusion of the filament. In addition, TPU and flexible filaments are very likely to buckle and kink up inside the tube. Again, that results in clogging and under extrusion. The best quality PTFE tubing in the 3D printing industry is Capricorn tubing with extreme tight tolerances and a lubricated interior to help the filament slide right through. This is a well worth it upgrade for the $12 price tag. Another great upgrade for new printers is a good quality part cooling fan and well designed fan duct. You can find a blower style fan on Amazon and some 3D printing websites. Instead of the fan pushing air out in a wide stream, the fan concentrates it into one small high airflow stream to cool the prints better. Along with the better fan comes with a better designed fan shroud for efficient airflow. And you can find so many different fan shrouds on the internet and Thingiverse for almost every single printer. Some of the most popular designs are the ring duct, the bullseye, and the hero me, but there are so many iterations online to test out. In addition, another excellent upgrade or addition to your 3D printer setup is a good spool holder. Like the fan duct, there are so many models online, but a very popular one is called the filler that checks almost every box. It fits almost every spool, can be easily mounted on or off the printer, uses 608 bearings for smooth rolling, and is very easy to print. Most printers come with a spool holder of some kind that either mounts at a weird position or cannot hold that many spool sizes, and the filler fixes all of those issues. You just have to purchase two bearings if you don't already have them, and you are good to go. Finally, capping off the tier number one upgrade is the most important of all, and those are the 3D printed upgrades themselves. If you just search your printer on Thingiverse or online, tons and tons of upgrades will show up that will help the ease of use, functionality, and even print quality of your 3D printer. I just searched CR10 on Thingiverse and there are hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of upgrades that I can print. So some of the upgrades that I printed for my CR10 were the manual extruder knob, 
a tool holder, fan shroud, cable guides, etc. All these little prints add to the functionality of the printer, makes it easier to use as well. The manual extruder knob is extremely useful when feeding in a new spool of filament or just purging the nozzle. The tool holder is great for every 3D printer setup to have and it allows for a place to organize and move around all of your tools. The great thing is that these upgrades are pretty much free if you don't count the cost of filament and can be printed in just a few hours. So those five upgrades will definitely improve the ease of use and print quality of your printer. Again, those upgrades are meant to be added right when you take the printer out of the box. And of course your printer will work without them, but these small modifications I mentioned will definitely be worthwhile. Moving on to the second tier, these upgrades are for the person who wants to get a little bit more out of their printer. If you've been printing for some time and want to add additional functionality or even more improvements to your printers, these upgrades are definitely for you. First, I chose another nozzle, but this is the last nozzle you will ever need. The E3D Nozzle X is a state-of-the-art 3D printing nozzle made from tool steel alloy and slick nickel plating with a polyphobic nano coating that will almost never wear out. E3D is so confident that the nozzle will not wear that they will give you a new one for free if it does. Basically, this nozzle will have an extremely hard time clogging and wearing, so after you pay the $30, you'll never have to get a new nozzle ever again, except for if you want a different size. Next are some pieces of equipment called motor dampers. These cheap $13 add-ons will reduce the vibrations caused by the stepper motors transferring into the printer frame and print itself. These devices bolt between the stepper motor itself and the motor mount on the printer frame with a small rubber ring that reduces the vibrations. The result is slightly better print quality in some circumstances, especially with small detailed parts where the motors are constantly jittering back and forth. Another really nice to have add-on is a BL Touch. You may have heard of this precise bed leveling instrument before, and it definitely makes printing a lot easier. If your printer does not have a bed leveling sensor, you can attach this device next to your hot end, and with some firmware, the printer will calibrate and adjust the nozzle height automatically. This means perfect first layer height every time, and no more bed calibration. So for $35, this upgrade is a great ease of use addition, but may be hard for some new users, as there is some wiring and firmware upgrades that are needed. In addition, one of my favorite add-ons to my 3D printing setup is Octoprint. This piece of software runs on a cheap $35 Raspberry Pi and plugs into the printer via the USB cable. It allows the user to manage, calibrate, print, and control the printer from anywhere. You just log on to the website hosted by the Raspberry Pi and can control almost every feature on the printer, manage, and watch prints from outside your home, even create time lapses of your prints. Octoprint is especially useful if your printer is in the basement or in a different room and you want to monitor your prints from elsewhere. There's even an app for your phone where you can control your printer from anywhere in the world. And I actually made a whole video on how to set up Octoprint and there'll be a link in the iCard above. Next up is something called TL Smoothers. Now some printers with higher quality stepper motor drivers will not need these, but cheaper printers use cheaper stepper drivers and sometimes they do not produce a smooth signal for the stepper motors. The TL smoothers plug in line with the stepper motors and help produce a better and smoother signal. Usually ringing or lines around a print called salmon skin is a result of stepper drivers with a signal that is not very smooth. The salmon skin effect around curved parts of a print can usually be fixed by these TL smoothers. Also these are pretty cheap for around $10 for three of them, the X, Y, and Z axis. Finally, most printers come with a pretty good build surface but the quality is usually not the best, they can get scratched up or ruined pretty quickly. The build tack surface is a great option to get prints to stick down and last a very long time. It comes as a big sticker that goes on top of the build plate and provides a textured surface to print on. There are a bunch of textured build surfaces on the market, but build tack is one of the best and highest quality. If your printer comes with an aluminum plate or glass bed, or you just want prints to stick better, definitely check out a build tack sheet. The price does vary by what size your bed is, 
but for my CR10, one sheet is about 20 bucks. Now that wraps up the second tier of upgrades and moves us on to the third and final tier. These are the top of the line upgrades for the person who wants the best printer and experience possible. If you want to go all out with the best upgrades, this tier is for you. Now before I begin, if you really want to upgrade your printer, there are a lot of things you can do, like upgrade it to a 24 volt system, replace the bearings with linear rails, etc. Basically rebuild your entire printer. But I want to formulate a list of upgrades that don't require you to rebuild your entire printer. And these upgrades do take some work and experience to add on, but they will not require you to rebuild your entire 3D printer. First is a brand new product on the market from E3D again, called the Hemera. This is an all-in-one extrusion system with no compromises. It is a direct drive system, so the extruder pushes the filament extremely close to the heat block, so there's less travel distance for the filament to go. This is great for a flexible and TPU filament, so it doesn't kink up on the way to the nozzle. Also, the hot end and heat sink are all combined together in a really compact system. Heat sink fans are shaped to push the air up and out of the way of the build area, and the hot end can be fitted with any of E3D's nozzles or heat blocks. In addition, the stepper motor has a dual gear drive system with a gear ratio that allows for extreme pulling force. To wrap it all up, the Hemera has a custom motor housing with T-slots for easy mounting and for accessories. This is easily one of the best all-in-one extrusion systems on the market today, and the price tag of $140 may seem high, but for what you get, this is an amazing deal. Up next is the Do-It 3D motherboard. Now this does require some rewiring of your printer, but the benefits are well worth it. Do-It 3D has a few motherboards now and comes standard with high quality stepper drivers. In addition, the boards are 32-bit, have Wi-Fi and expandability for extra accessories. The price is a little bit high at over $170, but this board definitely gives a lot more control over your printer and adds support for lots more features. If this board is too much work though, some companies sell motherboards that you can simply drop into your printer with little to no firmware tuning. Creality does have an upgraded control board for the Ender 3 that includes the silent and better stepper drivers that you just drop into the printer and plug everything back in. These new control boards from Do It 3D and other companies allow for silent printing, better performance, and more expandability with features. Also in tier 3 is the BuildTac Flex Plate System. This system comes with a magnetic base plate, a metal spring steel sheet, and another BuildTac surface like I mentioned above. You install the magnetic base on your printer and the BuildTac sheet to the steel. The flexible steel sheet snaps onto the magnetic base allowing for great print adhesion. And when the print is done, you can just take the bed off, flex the bed, and all the parts fall right off. It works so well and is extremely convenient. If you're still using a paint spatula to get your print off the bed, this is a well worth it upgrade. The best part is that you can have multiple bed surfaces like a PEI sheet that you can swap onto your printer as well. This is also a little expensive at around $140 for my CR10, but super convenient and worth it. Another great upgrade for the more advanced and adventurous users is an enclosure. You especially want an enclosure if you are printing more exotic filaments like hips or nylon or ASA, etc. as these materials tend to warp off the bed. The enclosure allows heat to stay in the print area and create a warm environment that allows the print to stick better and prevent warping. There's not really one enclosure that works for every printer as they are all different sizes, but there is a DIY option that a lot of people use. It uses two or three IKEA lac tables and some cut acrylic with 3D printed parts. This size enclosure fits most normal size 3D printers and also allows for creativity with upgrades of the enclosure itself, like lighting, fans for fume extractions, filament rollers on top, cameras, etc. The tables are extremely cheap at $10 each and the other parts will not be more than 50 bucks. In addition, like said above, LED lighting is a great upgrade that can be added to your setup and put inside the enclosure. Lighting is not necessary when printing, but it is really nice to have. 
good strength lighting on top of your printer or print area will help illuminate the part and nozzle. It is always good to have more lighting when diagnosing problems, unclogging a jam in the nozzle, or just calibrating the bed. There are tons of LED light strips online that can be plugged into the printer power supply, but I find the easiest is a USB power strip. All you do is attach the LED strip to your printer and then plug the USB into a phone charger or wall outlet and it works great. Finally, one of the coolest upgrades to my 3D printing setup and will be for yours as well is the Mosaic Palette 2. This machine is awesome as it allows for multicolor and multi-material printing with ease. It takes up to four filaments and slices them together to be used with a single extruder 3D printer. The slices are then tuned precisely to match the G-code on the printer and results in colors or materials changing at the perfect time in the model. This way of printing multi-color and multi-material is great because it requires no modifications to the printer itself and works great with almost every 3D printer. The Palette 2 has a bunch of other cool features like random mode, gradient, and more. If you want to add some color to your prints, this is definitely the machine for you. The price is pretty high though at $500 for the Palette 2 and $600 for the Palette 2S. You might be spending more on this one upgrade than the actual printer itself. So that wraps up the third and top upgrades to your 3D printer and 3D printing setup. I hope this helps with deciding on what to spend your money on for your 3D printer. In the 3D printing industry, we are all makers and creative people. The fun of 3D printing is not only printing itself, but upgrading and figuring out how to make the printer better. These upgrades range from low cost parts and accessories to top of the line extrusion systems and filament slicing machines. There are endless possibilities with 3D printing and endless room for innovation. Of course, all the upgrades I talked about in this video will be linked in the description below. I also want to give a big thank you to my community Discord members that helped brainstorm ideas and upgrades for this video. If you want to join, the link is also below. So thanks again for watching everybody. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe for more content on 3D printing. Comment down below if you have any questions and I will see you all in the next video.